everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I have a fun dyeing experiment prepared for you. Uh, yeah, I think we've got a few different variables we're going to play with and see how different or similar the final colorways are. Uh, but before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to today's viewer sponsor who requested the shout out name Love You Always. And to the sponsor, I want to say that I hope that you can feel the love I put into this yarn and that when you get it, it'll feel a little bit like a hug from me to you. If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find a link to the listing in the Kenneth's Creations Etsy shop in the video description. Today we are going to speckle some yarn on our countertop. And, but the way we're going to set the color is going to be different and it can give us some different results for each of the three skeins. In one of the skeins, we'll pre-soak it in vinegar, speckle on the dye, and then steam set it to create a speckled colorway that we've seen in many instances on this channel. For another one of the skeins, we will pre-soak in vinegar, speckle it in the same way, but then instead of steam setting it, we're going to dip it into a pot of water plus vinegar and see what happens. I expect that or I hypothesize at least, that we might still have some speckles in there, but some of the color will bleed out and it'll give us sort of a backdrop to those colors. But since colors can start striking at room temperature, we might still get some speckledness to it. The final skein, which I think will honestly be numbered number one, but the final, the final scenario that we have here is the yarn that we're gonna speckle will have had no vinegar pre-soak. Could we still see some dye setting? Sure, my tap water does run slightly acidic, uh, but when we dip that into a pot, I expect more of the colors to spread out. Uh, but who knows? We will have to wait and see how things go. We are actually gonna be working with the same color palette that we used uh, in the previous episode of Dye Pot Weekly, where I spread these colors on the countertop and wiped it up. We actually will be sort of repeating that project as well because I plan to leave no dye behind and we'll wipe the color off of our tablecloth. But yeah, the reason why I'm picking these three primary colors is that I'm curious to see how and if the colors bleed and blend together on the yarn. This is effectively a recreation of the kind of colorway that I did not pick for the 2018 limited edition Hanukkah colorway by speckling with these three exact colors. Uh, but I'm excited to see where the colors might ring true, where we might see them blend together more and yeah, I think that we'll learn, maybe learn something that we want to try to repeat in the future, or who knows, maybe the results will just be really similar and we'll be like, okay, well that tells us something. So we have skein one with no vinegar, skein two and three that have vinegar. I will be steam setting number three and then skeins two and one will get dipped each into a separate pot so we can see how and if the colors spread. Since we are going to be playing with dye powders, I will be wearing a respirator, safety glasses, and gloves, so make sure you take your personal safety equipment into some consideration. I added some of each color dye to cups, so that way I wouldn't have to uh, switch and like wash my gloves as much in between different colors. But what I'm going to do, and I'm going to start with the yellow, Make sure my glove is on nice and tight. I'm gonna take a pinch of dye and just slowly speckle that on to our yarn. Try not to go too heavy. Uh, that's how we ended up with Evil Fairy. But I also want some good color coverage. And you can see that a lot is coating on my glove and I'm sort of regretting not having a yarn mop here. Because uh, if I had a yarn mop, then I would wipe my finger 
on there, but I did not prepare one for us to use today. And we will be flipping the yarn and adding some color to other sides as well. This colorway isn't going to be identical to what I did in 2018 because I think my techniques and things are a bit more varied now. Uh, ooh, I want to touch. Okay, I guess I gotta touch the other two because I touched the one. Um, okay, I guess I will go rinse off my hand. That honestly pained me <laughs> to, to like do that. But now I'm coming in. You could see these little specks with the blue a bit more, but I'm just really barely moving my fingers and let some of the dye fall out. I've done a lot of speckling recently using some citric acid powder mixed in with the dyes. It's been a little while since I've done this with just the straight powder and honestly it feels nice. It feels like a nice little memory. Uh, but it's all about personal preference when it comes to the application method. I like having the control of my fingers. Some other people might prefer the having the control in a salt or pepper shaker. Uh, this is really up to you, but I like the tactile control. And I like seeing where the colors land on our yarn. Oh, and we don't want to go too, too, too heavy. I learned that the hard way, but I am trying to make sure I've got color across multiple strands. And now as I go into the red, this time I'm not washing my hands. So we'll see how it goes. But all of these colors, and I remember this from last time, they will look more like the actual colors once the dye has suck in, sunk in and we set the color. But right now, it absolutely feels a bit more like jewel tones. It feels more like navy, oh, that was a lot, navy and like a mustard yellow and a burgundy versus like red, yellow, and blue. And you can go soft or loud. It's fine if some of these colors combine into their color mixed components, but yeah, we're just starting with this light little layer of color. And so now I am going to, I'm gonna collect all the color mixture. I'm gonna go rinse my fingers off, but then we will come and flip the yarn and start adding color to the next side. Whenever it comes to touching the yarn, I'm going to try to touch the yarn that had no vinegar first. So I've got it and now I am touching and moving it a bit, not to try to like get the colors to move or anything, but to get the strands nice and spread out. Um, oh wow, you can see that there's areas on that bottom side where things were not super spread out. I will probably flip this multiple times because that's what I do now. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to not drag, oh dear, I don't really want them to touch. I'm trying not to drag the yarn a ton, um, or by drag, I mean rub it. I don't really want to rub it on the surface a ton, but I do want things nice and spread out. Then I can dry off my hands. And we're going to apply color to this side, continuing on where I think we need more color. 
and we're also going to speed up this process. All right, I'm pretty happy with this color. I'm going to do a little more of a quick close-up. They all look fairly similar right now, which is good. That's the goal. In these two dedicated dye pots, I have 12 cups of water. And we're going to add... Two tablespoons of white vinegar to each. It's approximate, it's not perfect, um, but yeah, as soon as these both heat up, then we're going to come and dip, I think, one and two into them. I do have the, the zip ties on the yarn labeled, so that way I can differentiate between them. And then the one that will be steamed, we'll go ahead and do that one. Uh, after we're done with these two. The reason why I'm doing two pots today is that I didn't want to leave the yarn soaking with the dye for severely different lengths of time. So I will go and grab the yarn, put one into here, and then go grab the other and put it in here. Um, and so that way, yeah, that should give, I think, a good representation. I considered whether I should just slowly dip. I think I'm honestly going to put it in, shimmy with the tongs, and then move on. Yeah, that's my plan! Okay, the mask is back on, and let's go and grab gently the yarn. Put it up off the counter, and uh oh. Plop in, plop, plop, plop. You can see some color coming out. Swirl it around and then we're going to let it stay. And do the same thing with the next one. Okay, we're here. We plop. We swirl, swirl, swirl. So right off the bat, uh, it feels like a lot more color came out of number one than number two, but it's hard to say for certain. Oh, I don't know. They both look very similar, so I'm not seeing a ton of color left. This is our number two. I see multi multicolored speckles, but also some nice color spreading. The colors feel a bit muddier here, a little bit more brown, but the difference is pretty minute. I would be really hard pressed to really share a difference between the two right now. I think we're really going to have to look at them dry. Um, you know, it's going to be like, do we see more tiny speckles on one than the other? There's a lot to be seen. Most of the color is pretty well set. Like I'm not seeing a lot of runoff on either of them at the moment. But what I want to do is go ahead and set a timer for, I think 15 minutes, um, just to see. But gosh, so on camera, the colors look a little more true over here. They look muddier over there. But I can't say for a hundred percent certainty how different or similar they are. Okay, I'm turning off the heat and let's remove the yarn and look at them side by side real quick. We'll do a closer in-depth analysis uh, 
once the yarn is dry, obviously, but I'm gonna take a look at it now. And the water is absolutely clear on both. It's really steamy, and so it's hard to say. So here's number one, and here's number two. Off the bat, number one looks like it's more pigmented overall. And maybe, yeah, maybe I'm seeing fewer speckles here. But I can't 100% say that, okay, the color and the speckles spread out more over here, and the speckles were a little more set here, so less color sort of bled out. That's really, really hard to say uh, for any kind of certainty because there could have just been more pigment on this one overall. But I am very intrigued and excited to take a closer look at this. Now I am coming into our steamer basket with this final skein and we'll have this to compare to the ones we did with immersion. And I'm gonna leave it in here for 20 minutes. While that is steaming, our counter is a mess. So I have a fourth skein of Nick Kick's straw fingering weight yarn. And in case I forgot to say, this yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, it's a yarn base I love, I use all the time. And, oh, this is interesting. I'll show you where I have the yarn sort of sitting to cool in a moment. But I have an observation that I'm excited to share. Um, okay, but yep, I'm just going, picking the next white surface of this yarn and using it to rub up what is left on this counter. There is not that much pigment left behind overall, and it seems like it's very red. Huh. Uh, so this yarn did already have some vinegar in it. Um, it definitely had some vinegar in it already, uh, but I'm thinking I might go, rather than waiting to steam it, I might go immerse this in that other dye pot that we still have. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> but before we go and drop this in a pot of hot liquid, let's just take a little closer look. This is the same dye pot we just used. And we are going to come in. The heat isn't on really, but I am just sort of dipping it down in. And honestly, that didn't change things very much, except we do have some like pink sort of washing out and washing around, which I think is nice. It's giving it like a little more of an average quality. But I will leave this here. Um, oh, and I guess I, I'll turn the heat on and leave it here on low heat for 15 minutes. Here's what's really interesting to me. And I mean, I guess it shouldn't be that much of a surprise, but here is the yarn that we just dyed in this video. Here is the yarn that we dyed in the last video. Granted, we use the same colors and we are doing the same kind of making them muddy, <laughs> but it feels super, super similar. And I would say this was definitely a little easier than um, trying to finger paint on the counter and then wipe it up. All right, we are done steaming and the yarn is beautiful and speckled and not muddy at all. I'm gonna let it cool a tiny bit in the steamer basket, but we will make sure again <laughs> that the yarn cools completely before we go and wash it. I plan to speed through the washing of all of this yarn. Unless otherwise noted, there was no bleeding. I washed in cool tap water, used a little bit of some clear dish soap, and then put the yarn through my spin dryer and hung it up to dry. 
Here are the three finished colorways that we created. We have two skeins that we pre-soaked in some water with vinegar, one that we steamed, one that we then dipped into some water, and then we have a third skein that we pre-soaked in just plain tap water, no vinegar, and then we dip dyed it into some water. Finally, we had a little yarn mop that we used to wipe up everything that was left on the counter. So the real question that I had today was between skeins one and two. They are very, very similar to one another in that in both cases, we see a lot of spread of color. We achieved this muted rainbow, but huh, it's honestly hard for me to say for sure. It feels to me like the color on the background is more pastel in the yarn that we pre-soaked with acid and that we see more speckles here, um, especially in some areas like this. We've, we've got some pretty sharp blue and red speckles. But over here we have speckles as well. And some of the speckles are just as sharp. And it's not just red, we definitely have blue speckles this is skein number one, and then skein number two has blue speckles as well. Okay, I'm gonna say definitively. There are speckles on both. I say the speckles are sharper on the skein that we pre-soaked with acid. Don't come for me if you disagree, but the speckles, a lot of the speckles that I see on this skein that we did not pre-soak with any acid, they feel a little more blown out. They are a little larger and a little less sharp. And over here, you know, I'm definitely seeing what looks like some more yellow speckles. Like in here, it's probably hard to see on camera, but they're distinct yellow spots. And I'm not really feeling as many yellow spots on number one. And we've got one and two. Are there other factors that could be in play here? Absolutely. There could have been more pigment on this skein. That could be why the background feels darker. Uh, this skein sat on the counter a little longer. Not a lot longer, but a little longer. And that additional time could have affected the sharpness of the speckles. Fundamentally though, the skeins are so similar that honestly it doesn't make a huge difference whether or not you pre-soaked with acid or not. In this case, I think that there are other variables such as time, etc., could come into play, and they are so, so similar that if I wanted to create something like this in the future, I probably would pre-soak with vinegar, but you could still end up with something that felt like it was more blown out, speckle-wise. It's also worth noting that my tap water is slightly acidic. So if I was using distilled water or something that had a neutral pH, we might see more of a difference in what we saw today because some colors will start striking with my tap water without the addition of extra acid. What makes a huge difference, however, is steam setting the yarn. This skein of yarn was dyed in the exact same way as these two, with the exception of how it was set. These were dunked into some water, and this one was steam set. And so here, we do have some blending. I do see some orange and a few hints of green, but ultimately this looks like a primary colored yarn with yellow, blue, and red speckles. And those speckles are super, super, super sharp, except for the yellow speckles. In general, yellow speckles tend to be a little more splotchy in my experience. Let me know in the comments which one of these three techniques you prefer. I think that there are definitely perks to both of these techniques and the type of yarn that we created are so different. I mean, here we even have white left behind and there is no white left in skeins one and two. After we had set the color on our primary three skeins, ah, because we dealt with primary colors, uh, we used one final skein that was just briefly wet in some acidic water to soak up the remaining colors. And we've got something that almost feels like pastel speckles on here, which is really, really lovely. The speckles are a little bit more blown out 
And we also have this nice wash of pink over the whole thing. This yarn mop is extremely different from the yarn that we created in the previous video where we speckled some of the same three colors onto a damp work surface and then used this yarn to wipe it up. Again, this point is when you leave no dye behind, the colors and proportions that you get left over are really, really random and you don't have a lot of control over those colors necessarily, uh, which is one of the beautiful things about it because the colors sort of create themselves. But you can have a lot of variability depending on how much dye is left behind on your countertop. There are definitely some similarities between the yarn that we created in this video and the yarn we created in the previous episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Um, I find that in the yarn we created today, I think we have more speckles and there's a little bit more brightness left in the yarn. In here, we do feel some yellow, red, and blue, and we have a lot more green and a little more brown in the yarn that we created when we had so much more blending on the countertop, moving that yarn around. Today, as we dip the yarn into the pots, the colors started to spread, but then struck to the yarn um, fairly quickly. So we did get some blending, but also less blending than if we had soaked it in plain water with no acid and let all that color bleed out and sort of blend together, if that makes sense. I would like to give a huge, huge thank you to our viewer sponsor of today's video. Rather than a name, the shout out requested today is Love You Always. And I truly hope that you find this yarn is dyed with love and is full of love and is a hug from me to you. Skein number two is my favorite of the bunch today because it is so unique and feels truly like a different way for me to apply color to yarn and is something I absolutely want to explore with more color combinations in the future. Do you love the yarn that I dye and wish that you could bring some home with you? Well, you can. <laughs> the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop is filled with over 100 skeins of hand-dyed yarn that I've dyed in these video tutorials. So you can watch the video while you craft with the yarn, and it adds another layer of handmade quality to your project. I always include the video title and the date the video was published in the listings and on the tags of the yarn, so that way you can connect your yarn to the video where I dyed it. You can find a link to the Etsy shop in both the video description and in the top right hand corner of your screen where that iCard is located. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I publish videos every Tuesday and Friday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. But on top of that, there are frequent live streams and unboxings and other bonus videos and special series. And you really don't want to miss a thing. Leave a comment below and let me know what colors you think I should try combining on yarn with this kind of technique. Uh, it was really fun to pick three primary colors, colors that if you blend them all together could end up brown, but we didn't really end up with brown. And so, yeah, we could do purple and orange, or we could do something that is a little more safe and stick with like blue and yellow and green. But let me know. I look forward to hearing what you think. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.